And uh, so Terry's here, and we're very happy to have you. And Terry, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Well, how I got started is I learned my ceramics trade at Arcasanti, which is an architectural community up near Mayer, Arizona. I lived there for nine years and did ceramics, manager ceramics production for them. Then when I left Arcasanti in 95, I started my own bell and planter business, doing all the designs that Paulo Soleri just didn't like. So. <laughs> rest is history. So I've been doing uh, my own ceramics since 1995 and uh, as John mentioned I was one of the lucky people to get to be one of the first people to be in Sibley so I'm <laughs> glad to be here. And he's, he reminds me it's seven or eight years so it's a long time. So. <laughs> and how do you make a bell? Because your bell sounds so great and it's really quite interesting because it's just so, so clay. Well it is clay but it's stoneware clay. You need a higher fire Mm -hmm. clay to make a bell, something that will uh, that will ring or have resonance. If you used earthenware, you'd get more of a clunking sound. Uh, so stoneware is almost like glass. It fires up to uh, 2200 degrees and uh, once I fire them in a kiln, well once I what I do is I get the clay from Globe, Arizona in a raw state, so I get 10 tons of raw clay dumped in my backyard. Throughout the year I process it by hand and I make a slip out of it, and I make molds with the basic shapes of the bells. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the, the molds are empty, the, the piece comes out, and then I take a razor blade and I carve each design, just as you see here. Usually I put a different design on each side of the bell. Mm -hmm. And then once they've been carved, I let them dry, and once I have enough of them, I fire them in a big old kiln that I have, a big gas fire kiln, as I said, up to about 2200 degrees. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they're fired, I get them out and assemble each and every one of them with copper wire and steel chain. And, and how do you get them to sound like that? Well, mostly they have to have these things called keyholes. Okay. And keyholes help with that resonance that, uh, that you need to have a bell to ring. But even without the keyhole, it would ring anyway, in some way. The keyholes just help a sustained ring. A little and bit. The, the different ones have different sounds. Yes, they do. Some of them, like this is, this is the flare. I'm okay on that sound, but this, I like that a lot better. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the gourd, and I like uh -huh. that a lot. So uh -huh. different ones. Some like this is always high pitched. Uh -huh. And you know what? I don't have one of those in front of my house, but I have one of the gourd ones. So yeah. Uh -huh. So if you like a high pitch, you can get that. If you like a low pitch, it depends on the the, the shape of the bell itself and where the keyholes are. My uh, sister actually has one hanging in her front uh, uh, eave on her house outdoors in Rochester, New York, year round. Well, I bet that hasn't ruined the value of her home. <laughs> But well, as long as she brings it in, if you have these bells, these are not glazed, so they can absorb moisture and freeze. If that happens a lot, they can get hairline cracks. So my advice is if you live somewhere like Michigan or somewhere like upstate New York, you'd want to keep it protected underneath the eave where it doesn't get wet and freeze a lot, or just bring it in the wintertime and put it back out in the spring. Then it should last you years. And then you also do planters, yes, which we carry. And... Uh, these have been very popular, and uh, what, um, what, what was your goal or objective with these? Well, I really started the ceramic business to make planters before bells because I like to grow plants at home. I've always been interested in succulents in particular, cacti and succulents. Mm -hmm. And so these, these being non-glazed, they, al they allow the plant to breathe in a way so you can water them and slowly the water will evaporate out of this, you know. It won't hold the water in to really cause root rot too much. I do have a drainage hole in the bottom of each one too. Mm -hmm. But these are just nice sturdy uh, planters. They don't spall either, so like earthenware will do where it will start flaking off. These will last just look like this for years on end if you just plant a plant in them and, and, and take care of it like that. So uh, so I started I'm making planters because I really like plants. <laughs> Which is good. Yes. And uh, also your your insignia or your signature uh, is on each one. Right there. And uh, what does that represent? Okay. He's getting a little nosy about this. <laughs> okay. So that is, that is a letter in the Danish alphabet 
that is pronounced if I don't mess it up. Ooh. And it's like an O, but it's a U. And what it means in Danish by itself, just that letter, that means island. Just as in English, the letter I can mean I. In Dan Denmark, that letter by itself means island. And so some friends and I decided to use that as sort of a symbol of our friendship in Denmark because I lived in Denmark for a short time. Uh -huh. And thus, it is my signature for my artwork. Well, that is a great story. I apologize for prying. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for sharing your talents with our store. And you've been a big part of it for eight years. And thanks for coming out tonight. Well, John, I appreciate it. Thanks for having my stuff in your store. <laughs>